Now, John Partridge, oh, we love him. Whatever he's doing, whether he's acting on stage or on screen. He's bearing all with his show called Stripped. Again? Yes, <laughs> at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Delighted that he's got up very early, which is a tough thing to do when you're at Edinburgh, uh, because his show starts. You had your first preview last night, John. How did it go? I did. It was uh, amazing. Aww. It's a really personal show for me, Stripped, because... Um, as of yesterday, I am 300 days sober. I can only look at my life through the eyes that I have now. Um, and it just felt like it was the right time for me to do this. And I'm absolutely loving my new life. Wow. It's, ama it's amazing that you say that, John, because you've been mm. in the studio a number of times. We've talked about all sorts of things, sort of certainly yeah. within the last year and before that. And we had no idea, and, we, and you're always very open about everything you do in your life, but we had no <laughs> idea that alcohol and also drugs yeah. had become a really big problem for you. How bad did it get, John? Yeah. Well, I don't think they'd become a really good... I think it's something that... You know, I started working when I was 16 in the West End, and I'm now 47. I don't I look good for it. And it's something that I have used throughout my career and throughout my life. Any form of addiction is about not wanting to feel, whether that is food, drugs, drink, shopping, sex. That's what it's about. And that's what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to feel, I never felt confident in just being myself and just allowing myself to feel like me. And that's what it took me a long time to do. Doing the full Monty at the beginning of the year allowed me to open up and be honest about an aspect of my life I'd kept private, even from my family for 14 years. And that was a floodgate for me. The overwhelming sense of relief and comfort and support I got from the public, from my friends and from my family gave me confidence to open that out and open that conversation out and explain where I'd been. I chose to talk about my sobriety and my addiction in a stage show because that's where I feel most comfortable. That's where I knew I'd be safe. It's really difficult to talk about things like that because you do feel a sense of shame. I say my greatest performances were not on the stage, they were in my real life because you would never have known. Mm. I was always up and dressed and first on set. Uh, and now I don't need to be like that. And the sense of peace I have from that and joy and happiness. I don't want you to think that my show uh, here at the Fringe is a pity party because it isn't. I have a wonderful life. I have an amazing husband. I've got a family I couldn't be more proud of and friends I couldn't live without. And I've achieved more than I ever thought possible. But I want to know what I can do now, I mean what I can achieve now. Because if I did all of this like that, who knows? You know, you know who what? knows what I can do right now? It's so inspirational, John. It's so inspirational because we're, uh, you know, every time your name is mentioned here, Good Morning Britain and everywhere, but, oh, I love him. I love him because you're always so much fun. And it's great <laughs> to hear that everybody yeah. has been really supportive because I was interested when you were saying that it was quite yeah. hard for people that knew you as the old John um, to come to terms with the fact that you were yeah. going to be different while you were giving it up. And, you know, it's difficult, isn't it, when yeah. people feel disappointed that the party animal isn't there? I say in my show, you know, um, my parties were legendary and they were. And lots of people in this audience tonight have been at such an event, <laughs> but the thing for you it was a one-off or a monthly thing or a three-monthly thing. But for me, it was every night of the week and it was hard work. It really was. It was hard work because people would come to me to have their good time. And I ended up having a good time mm. every night of the week. Mm. Now, I'm not blaming, I'm not saying that's why I did it, but it is part of it. And now people don't necessarily know how to deal with mm. me. They don't necessarily know how to... I still say in my show, I still want to party, dance, live, love, laugh, cry, win, lose, rock and roll. I am still me, Johnny. I'm just a sober version. And I can tell you right now, I am way better for it. Well, uh, the, it's, it's still fabulous. It's still full of beans that. as well. But the thing you said, John, that we would never have known, because like, whenever you came in here, you were always up and, and energetic and passionate about whatever it is you've done. And clearly you are very excited about this show. You've done your previews. Is it the big first night to a proper audience tonight? 
It's my big first night tonight. I'm at Assembly Checkpoint. The Fringe is an amazing place because it celebrates art and diversity. And please come and support us, not just me, but everybody here at The Fringe. Get out. It's really cheap to come and see things here. It is really, really reasonable. And we all know theatre is expensive. Here, it's a ten or a ticket. Come down. It's 60 minutes. Come and enjoy it. Come and enjoy What's it. What's not to love? Johnny, thank you so much for, for sharing you. your story with us. Best of luck. Break a leg, as they say, uh, for the run as well. I'm sure it's going to be a huge success. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, and, and we'll see you back really in the studio very soon, I hope. Thank you. Oh, you love so a cheap happy. night, don't you? What? You love a cheap night. Love a cheap night. I, I am a cheap night. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm always a cheap not day to a cheap, cheap night. night.